Warning, this video contains clips and excerpts of a humorous nature not normally found in math class. These are intended to fight the adolescent condition known as short attention span, found heavily in the modern teen, especially when in school. The only thing you should attempt at home is the math. The rest, you just laugh at. Hi, welcome back to AT Math. Today, 6-3, solving systems by elimination. Why, this is easier than learning a martial art. Now remember this, 5x equals 3x plus 2. If you remember, we first want to get rid of the 3x. So instead of plus 3x, we minus 3x. Minus 3x to one side, minus to the other. Take a look, you're left with 2x equals 2, because this stayed. Divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals 1. Notice that by subtracting 3x, we got rid of the x on the one side of the equation, so we were able to solve for the side with the remaining x. Today's work is no different. Let's start with this. Say you have 4x plus y equals 16, and 2x minus y equals 2. Notice how there is a positive x and a negative x. Or put different, there's a plus 1y and a negative 1y, which are opposites. Today it's all about finding an opposite, and if you can find an opposite balance, it's going to be really easy to do this one. So naturally the opposites, if added, would eliminate each other. So let's just do that. And what I mean is, I'm going to match the terms up, and I'm going to add this plus this, but I'm going to stack them like this. So what you do is you put your equation. Now if your equation has a four, you know, like an x and y on the same side, you have to put the other one with the x and y on the same side. So we have to match them. And I, I stack them up, put them into columns. So this column here is my x column I'm going to put, which has a positive 4x and a positive 2x. This is my y column, which has a positive y and a negative y. And this column has a positive 16 and a positive 2. But notice what happens when I add them. The 4x and 2x become 6x. The y and negative y cancel out, leaving 0y, which will disappear. And 16 and 2 make 18. Because this was eliminated, now it's just 6x equals 18. Now that's all right, because that's easy to solve. I can just divide both sides by 6. Voila, x equals 3. Once I do that, it doesn't matter which side I plug in the x at. If I do this, 4 times 3 is 12, plus y is 16. Instead of plus 12, minus 12 to both sides, I get 4. If I do it over here, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus y equals 2, I minus 6 from both sides. I get negative y equals negative 4. Flip the sign, flip the sign, y equals 4. Either way, y equals 4. So, since it was 3 and this is 4, the answer is 3 comma 4. Take a quick break. And we're back. For a proof, let's solve this by substitution as well. So if I were to go ahead and say solve for this y, instead of plus 4x, I'll minus 4x to both sides. So y equals negative 4x plus 16. Now I'll take that y and stick it in over here. So I'll go ahead and take 2x. What's up, buddy? <laughs> Carefully, you can do that. Go ahead and get a uh, a paper towel and, I mean, and a paper plate. And make sure you uh, put the um, donuts back together, okay? Don't leave it open, okay? Yes, he wanted a glazed donut. That's fine. All right, anyway, somewhere along math again, I believe. 2x minus, instead of y, we're going to drop in uh, 4x, negative 4x plus 16. So I'm going to stick that in where the y was, and then, then equals 2. So it's just this, but instead of the y, this guy is substituted in. Anyway, long story short, 2x is still here. Two negatives make a positive, so positive 4x. Negative and a positive make a negative, so negative 16 equals 2. And now let's see here. So I'm going to add these two x's together. 2x plus 4x makes 6x. Minus 16 equals 2. Instead of minus 16 plus 16, add 16 to both sides. 6x equals 18. Look familiar. Divide by 6, divide by 6, x equals 3. Plug it back in, voila. So you can solve by substitution, you can solve it by elimination, and yes, you can even solve by graphing. Now, eh, take a quick break. <laughs> yeah. So 
2x plus 4y equals 14 and negative 2x plus 5y equals negative 5, see how I have a built-in opposite already. So I can just go ahead and line them up and add them out. So 2x plus negative 2x, gone. 4y plus 5y is 9y. 14 and negative 5 make positive 9. 9y equals 9. Divide both sides by 9. y equals 1. Plug the 1 in here. You can see 4 times 1 is 4. So 2x plus 4 equals 14. Minus 4 to both sides. 2x equals 10. Divide by 2 to both sides. x equals 5. Over here, plug the 1 in. 5 times y, 5 times 1 is 5, so negative 2x plus 5 equals 5, excuse me, negative 2x plus 5 equals negative 5, minus 5, minus 5, negative 2x equals negative 10. Divide by negative 2 to both sides, you notice you get 5 again. So either way, when y is 1, x seems to be 5, so 5 comma 1. If I plug them both in, you'll see they both total out. Since they both equal out, and the, they're proven that the coordinate point is true, so it fits for both equations. You try. Go ahead. 3x minus 5y equals negative 16. 7x plus 5y equals 46. Hint, they're already set up, so you can just add them up. Notice here these cancel out. These add up to 10x. This adds to 30. Divide both sides by 10, you get 3. Plug them in. Booyah, it makes 5. If you didn't pause for that one, go ahead and pause, try again. Make sure you get it right and copy me if you have to. Take a quick break. and back. Wouldn't it be nice if that's all there was to it? Yeah, right. Even the angry monkey knows that's not the case. Family Guy reference. It's a naughty show. Shouldn't watch till you're 18. Anyway, not every problem will have terms that are already ready to be subtracted. Often we have to change an equation to make that, to make that elimination. For example, let's say I have x plus y equals 10. Negative 2 x plus 5 y equals 43. Well, if I added them now, I have negative 1x and 6y and 53, but that didn't get rid of one of my x's or y's, so that's not going to work. If I did that, you see, I get negative 1x plus 6y equals 53, and that's not very helpful. But what we will do is set up the equation so it can eliminate a term. Simply put, x won't get rid of negative 2x, but positive 2x would get rid of negative 2x. So if I change this to a 2x instead of an x, I'd go ahead and cause that opposite and get rid of it. Well, how do you do that? Well, remember with an equation, I can times this guy by 2. I got times everything by 2. You have to have balance. So, put a 2 on the outside. You take 2 times x, 2 times y, and 2 times 10. The idea is that x plus y equals 10 is the same as saying 2x plus 2y equals 20 because I've balanced both sides so I can go ahead and multiply. So now I have 2x plus 2y equals 20. Now notice I haven't changed a thing on this guy. I could if I wanted to, but I don't have to because now I'm going to get the opposites taking care of each other. Look here and see how they eliminate. Now you have 7y and now you have 63. So divide by 7, divide by 7, y equals 9. If you plug 9 in over here, you minus 9 to both sides, x equals 1. If you plug it in here, it makes 45. Minus 45 to both sides, negative 2. Divide by negative 2, x equals 1. Either way, it's 1 comma 9. Break time. back. Another one, 3x minus 2y equals 12, 4x minus 3y equals 15. There's a couple ways you can do this. You could just multiply a term to make an opposite variable, but that would be very difficult. In other words, if I took um, 
the y here in times to by made y into negative two thirds you know negative two thirds, or if I took this x in times to by negative three fourths, which I believe the book does, but I'm not really a fan of that because that's difficult. But you see, I have to going to have to multiply both. Now there's a thousand different ways I could do this. What I'll do is this. I'm going to use the kiss rule to keep it simple, and show you what I think is easiest. Well, first of all, both terms are either positive or negative anyway. So that means I'm going to have to switch one of them positive negative or negative to positive. It doesn't matter if I make this negative or this positive or this negative or this positive. I have to figure out some way to make them opposites. That's the first thing. Second, to make it where the x or the y will be an opposite of each other, I'm going to have to switch both equations. Unless I want to go back to this you know, weird fraction to change this 3 into a 4, and I don't want to do that. So, since I don't want to do that, what I'm going to do and I'll say, well, 2 and 3 meet at 6. Remember, that's the uh, least common multiple. So, if I can turn both of these into a 6 and make one positive and one negative, I'll have that balance. So, here's my thought. Well, I just flipped these around, but that's okay. I'll take negative 3 and times by 2 and take negative, the negative 2 and times it by 3. So, I go ahead and times and times, and when I times all these by 2, I get 8x minus 6y equals 30. When I times all these by 3, I get 9x minus 6y equals 36. Now they're the same. I'm almost there. I just have to flip this from a negative to a positive. How? Well, if I'm going to go ahead and instead of times it by 2, I'll just times it by negative 2. Notice how now I get my positive 6y. Because I times by negative 2, times by negative 2, times by negative 2. OK. Why did I do all this? Because now when I add them up, negative 8x plus 9x, I get 1x. These cancel like they're supposed to. And this makes positive 6. So now x equals 6. Let me plug it into either side. You can go ahead and take a look. Pause it and take a look if you like. Notice how you get y equals 3 either way. So my answer is 6, 3. And yes, I could have solved it by substitution. And yes, I could have solved it by graphing. They all would have been fine choices. Break. And back. Wow, that's a lot of work. But really, it's just a lot of small, easy steps. Once again, I will tell you that if you write out all the small, easy steps, you have nothing to fear. If you try to do this all in your head without writing out the equations, expect many problems as it's easy to forget a small step. And I really can't say that enough. If you write out every little step like I did in my last section, you'll be fine. You try to do all this in your head, pfft, good luck. You know, I would screw up. And as you've seen me teach class, you've seen me make a lot of mental errors. The more I do in my head, the harder it is to keep track of it all. So let's do another. Go ahead. If you want a strategy, notice how the 2 and 4 could meet at a positive and negative if I made the 2 into a 4. So go ahead and give it a try here. I just leaked out my strategy. I times it by 2. All right. So I make 4x, 2y, and 0. Why is it still 0? I'm times them all by 2, and 2 times 0 is still 0. It is still balanced, believe it or not. It's still the balance, because I'm still times them all by 2. Even though this didn't move anywhere, that's OK, because if you times something by 2 and it's still 0, it's still 0. Anyway, these cancel. Now I get 4y, and this is 8. Well, divide by 4, divide by 4, y equals 2. Plug them in, pause if you want. You can follow along here. Hope you see the answer was negative 1, so negative 1 comma 2. Not sure? Plug them in. If you plug them both in, 8 equals 8, 0 equals 0, they work out. OK, you try. Pause it, give it a try. Now, you can probably solved it using different equations than I did, but it still should make the same answers. I went ahead and used the times 10 up here times 3 here to make my 30. That's just what I did. Cancel that out. I made negative 36. This became 0 divided by negative 36. Y is 0. Plugged them in, plugged them in, x is 4. You probably, I'm guessing, turned these into 6s, I'll bet. But I'll bet your result was the same. I'll bet, I'll bet. Try again. Pause it and try. You can kind of see my little cheat sheet down here, what I did. Go ahead. Times by 3, they got negative 3y. Cancels out, 8x equals negative 8. 
makes x equals negative 1, plug it in, plug it in, y equals 2. Now you might say, why am I plugging into both? Well, if I plug it into both, remember, and they both come to the same number, I know I did it right. If I plug it in and I got a different number for each one, something went wrong. That's my double check. That's the way to make sure that I know what I'm doing. Finally, well, you know what? Quick break. Finally, you can move the terms around to suit your needs. So see how I have 3y plus x equals 10 and x plus 4y equals 3? Plus 3, excuse me. Here's the problem. On the top one I have y and x on this one side, and the number on the other. And then the other one I have x on one side and 4 and y on the other. Remember, I have to stack them. So you have to put either x and y together or move that y back over or whatever. So what I'm going to do with this bottom one is move the 4y over. I don't care if it's negative, now I have them stacked up. I have the y's, I have the x's, I have the non-x and y's. So now I just have to make these merge somehow. Easiest one for me, I thought, was to take the x and make it a negative x. So I times them all by negative 1. Boom! I have my opposites, which goes away. 3y plus 4y is 7y. 10 minus 3 is 7. y equals 1. Boom, 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 boom. There you have it. You try, go ahead. Go ahead and you try. Hopefully you paused and tried. Let's see what you did. I went ahead and moved the x and y's this way to put x first then y. Then I went ahead and added 4y to both sides and I just stacked them like this. Step 2, I went ahead and made both of these 14 and negative 14 causing the rift there which cancels. 29 and 116 divided out, y equals 4. Did both sides, got 7, 7 comma 4. Now, the word problem. <coughs> a group of SMS students spent $31 on 13 food items at the fair. Hamburgers were $3 and hot dogs were 2 bucks each. How many hot dogs were bought? How many hamburgers were bought? X is number of hamburgers, Y is number of hot dogs. Now this is the quintessential al algebra problem. Why would you want to know this, by the way? Who cares? Because if you're selling at, you know, I don't care if it's a hot dog stand or the fair, whatever you're trying to make money, you need to take account of how many were sold. Now, if you're smart, you went ahead and counted your hot dogs and hamburgers prior. You know, and then you just keep track of how many you sold, so you know how many more to buy, so you have stock for the customers. You don't want to buy too many because then they rot. But if you don't buy enough, then you're losing money. But what if someone didn't take good inventory? What if somebody let you down? This is how you figure out how much you made a different way if you don't have access to an inventory sheet. So we say you have $31, all right, and there was 13 items bought. Okay, hamburgers were three, hot dogs were two. There's a couple ways you can play this. I'm making the hamburgers X, the hot dogs are Y, but you could certainly flip that if you wanted. It makes no difference. But my first equation is however many hot dogs and hamburgers I had, I sold 13 total. So X plus Y equals 13. Now the equation for the total cost, remember this is a separate equation. I'm putting 3x because each hamburger costs $3. That doesn't mean it's 3 hamburgers per, it just means $3 per. And the cost for the hot dogs were $2, so I put 2y. The only rule is this, if I make hamburgers x here, hamburgers have to be x here. If I made hamburgers y, then this hamburger would have to be a y, that's all. So in this case, hamburgers were x, hamburgers x, y, hot dogs y. So again, to reiterate, since it was $3 per hamburger, 3x, $2 for a hot dog, so 2y equals a total cost of 31. Again, I repeat, this one just tracks how many were sold.
So hot dogs and hamburgers combined equals 13. This talks about cash, how much money. So 3x plus 2y equals 31. And now we combine the two. Where will the two meet? Well, I went ahead and said, I'll just make this y into negative 2y, so I caused that canceling out. All right. So times by negative 2 to both these, all three of these guys makes negative 2x minus 2y equals negative 26. Stack them. These cancel. 1x equals 5. So it seems like my x, which was hamburgers, equals 5. Well, all right. I plug the 5 into either one. This is probably a lot easier, but you can do it to either one. I get y equals 8. So it seems like I sold five hamburgers and eight hot dogs. So I know what to replenish with. Obviously, hot dogs are sold better. Whether or not it's because they're cheaper priced or people like them better, that's a different story. But this way I can tell how much I've been selling. I'll know to replenish hot dogs faster than hamburgers. And that's why you do that. And the other way is you made $15 in hamburgers. I made $16 in hot dogs. Even though hot dogs were uh, cheaper, I sold more of them. So I could go ahead and say I made more money off my hot dogs. And the last thing I'll tell you is why you're ever going to use this. I don't care if you're running a Walmart or if you're doing a McDonald's or anything else. Knowing what customers want and having it when they want it at a price they'll pay for it equals success. But if you don't have one of those uh, things in your favor, you won't make a dime. That's the difference between businesses winning and losing. Do you have a product people want? Do you have it in stock? Do you have it as a price they'll pay for it? If you match those three customer needs, you'll be successful. And if you don't believe me, as much as people complain about Walmart, the reason why it's such a glorious success is they only sell stuff for about 1% or 2% more than what they get. But that's because they keep the uh, price rock bottom. It's only 1% or 2% more, and they can sell enough of it. It doesn't make a difference. Now, you can argue it's all from China or whatever. That's true. But I'm just saying on the consumer side, they fit those three things that consumers need, and that's why they're the biggest you know, company in America. Moving on. Take a break. And you can follow on page 400 if you have trouble, but you try. Sam spent $24.75 to buy 12 flowers for his mother. Nice boy. The banquet contained roses and daisies. Roses are two fifty each, and daisies are $1.75. How many of each type does Sam buy? Again, maybe Sam threw away his receipt, just in case he wanted to know. So, okay, here's what we'll do. Roses and daisies together were 12 flowers, so X plus Y equals 12. And then the cost for it, uh, roses were 250 each, but that's pretty cheap for a rose. But okay, we'll say 250 each for a rose. And daisies are a buck 75, which is awfully expensive for daisies. But whatever, 2.5x plus 1.75y equals 24.75. Uh, there's a couple of different ways you can play it. I'm just going to times this by negative 2.5 times negative 2.5 to all these. So now I have negative 2.5x minus 2.5y equals negative 30. Stack them. These cancel. This makes negative 0.75y equals negative 5.25. Divide by negative 0.75 to each side. I get y equals 7. Plug it in, plug it in. This looks a lot easier than this one, but notice how they both work. One just is going to take half hour of work, and this is going to take about three seconds. X equals 5. So either way, 5x's, so you, sold five, you bought 5 roses and 7 daisies. So done. You'll definitely want more practice. And between the three different systems, I assure you, we'll spend a day before the test on boards doing practice. You'll get what you need. But if you're still having trouble, please, please see me before class, uh, homeroom, lunch crunch, and I'll be happy to work with you. Thanks again. Bye. Bad-tempered brawler versus streamlined predator. A 7,000-pound hippo will fight anything that moves. But is it a match for a 700-pound bull shark? Let's look at what each brings to the fight. 
A big male hippo can be more than 11 feet long and 5 feet tall at the shoulder. He tips the scales at 7,000 pounds. Main weapons, tusk-like teeth. Each lower canine is more than a foot long and can weigh almost two and a half pounds. Those canines may look blunt, but the inner edges sharpen themselves as they grind together. Because its dental armory is so heavy, the hippo has an oversized lower jaw powered by huge muscles. The jaw hinges far back, giving the hippo a flip-top head. Up to 11 feet long and weighing 700 pounds, the bull shark is the pit bull terrier of the shark world, armed with lethal cutting teeth. They're blamed for more attacks on humans than any other species of shark. The bull shark is just as happy in a freshwater lake or river as it is in the sea. Bull sharks are ambush predators. They wait patiently for the right moment, then make their move. They use two techniques. If they're not sure of their target, they bump, then bite. If they are sure, it's a deadly hit at 11 miles per hour. Jowls meets jaws when hippo and bull shark go head to head. The bull shark begins the encounter with an exploratory bump. After confirming the hippo is food, it tries to get in some bites. The hippo's thick hide, combined with his enormous girth, is too much of a mouthful for the smaller shark. Even the thin skin behind the back leg proves too tough for the shark. The hippo doesn't know what hit him, but that bad temper lights a fire in his belly. Once the hippo begins his counterattack, the tide turns. The hippo's enormous jaws easily encircle the shark. It's impaled on those foot-long tusks and crushed. The big guy won.